The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. July 17th, 2020, Joe here at the Wake Up Channel. I appreciate everybody for joining me today. As I said before, I was going to be doing some more videos on all of the absolute crazy madness that's going on. And we must understand one thing, that the devil is always trying to convince everyone that he does not exist. I believe the devil is communism and Marxism itself. I believe that the devil is intertwined into all of those things. Please remember, I don't care if you're not religious. I don't care if you don't read the Bible or anything like that. But I'm sure that most people at least remember the story of the devil taking Jesus up to the mountain and showing him the glories and all the things that could be had if he just if he just knelt down and worshiped him. We are seeing this every single day within our schooling system, within the entertainment uh, uh, the, the entertainment system, I guess, a programming that we have right now where so many people are just kneeling down and they are bending their will to the state and the government. Um, and this idea that we should just abdicate personal responsibility. When most people talk about communism or Marxism, most times they are talking about the economic system and, and its juxtaposition against capitalism. Capitalism is evil, they say. Capitalism exploits workers, they say. Communism and Marxism is all about equality. It's all about, it's, more, it's, it's a more humanitarian type of approach to humanity. And this is a simple and flat lie. The devil always wants to dissuade you from the truth of what is actually going on. The devil does hide in the details. We could talk all day long about how much communism has been a destructive force in the world and how many people it's killed, 100 million people. The majority, of course, coming from China, uh, also Russia as well, and other regimes. Those are the big two. But uh, we could talk all day about how communism and Marxism has killed people, how it has undermined freedom, and how it has put people into a class system and this collectivist type of philosophy. But at the end of the day, what communism really is, is the ab it's, the, uh, it, it's, it's the removal of personal responsibility in humanity. And humanity is really centered on the individual and the individual responsibility, doing the right thing, having a moral and upright standard in your life where you don't have to look to the collectivist whole to understand what is right and what's wrong. Once you abdicate that, once you let that go and you let communism and Marxism and, you know, all these other types of destructive types of ideologies take over, then you will be lost eternally. You will not have free will. You won't, you won't even know what free will is. And that is unfortunately the world that we're living in right now. And we are teaching this to our children. There was a report back in 2018. I'm sure you probably remember it. If not, I will tell you that over 50%, I believe 58% of millennials actually favored socialism. They favored socialism because they're upset. They feel like they're failures. They feel like they haven't gotten their uh, piece of the American dream or the piece of the pie. So in, in, instead of actually taking personal responsibility, they have embraced communism. They have embraced this ideology that is all about setting everything equal and setting people apart at the same time. But as far as instituting a communist type of state, it always begins with a violent insurrection and a violent uprising. That is, that is basically where we are at right now. I want to go over a few stories here. The first one that kind of uh, broke out here is this company called Visor, V-Y-Z-R Technologies. And now they are building this type of bubble that you can live in. It's a BioVisor 1.0. It's pre-order. It's uh, I believe this is something that they have been working on. I believe through um, some of those companies that uh, 
can't even remember the uh, the company. Where, wherever you have a good idea and 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 you get uh, you know fundraising for it, I'm having kind of a brain fart on that. But that is what they are doing right now. This is the uh, this is a new reality that they want to shove down your throat. They want to keep you scared. This type of environment of fear and not knowing what's going to happen around the corner is driving a lot of people to to do things that they would not normally do. One thing, of course, which is buying something like this to live inside. Biovisor. I mean, this is this is something straight out of science fiction. Of course, now we know that the coronavirus, the death rates are plummeting. Of course, that's why they are pumping up the numbers and trying to keep people afraid. Like I said, this is probably all going to end in November, so BioVisor is probably not going to be making too much money because people will eventually wake up to the scam that they are being sold. Uh, this is uh, something else that's not being talked about in the news. Uh, July 22nd asteroid, close approach date, identifier skewed by MSM. Is there a strike possible? So is it possible that the media is trying to cover up a potentially hazardous event such as an asteroid striking. Now, of course, we've heard these news I and mean, this type of news over and over. There's going to be a possible strike, but eventually it's going to happen. It's just science. You know, we are living in a world that is very, I mean, we are protected by many of the planets in our solar system, including our own moon. But eventually, one of these disastrous type of uh, asteroids will break through and will strike the Earth. It is not a possibility it is a certainty that it will eventually happen now how big of this thing will be that's really up to discussion it you know the uh jpl is always tracking these near earth objects and uh they are talking about uh, a couple of them here this one that's going to be skimming by the 22nd there's one on the 24th as well and if you look here this uh it's called 220 no and ND. ND is going to be on the 24th, and apparently that is going to be at a very safe distance. But the one that is two days before is going to be very, very um, close, about 296,000 miles, which sounds like a lot, but it is a near miss. But that's to the moon. It's actually 481,000 miles. These are the things that uh, are going to continue to keep happening. Of course, there's also another one that's going to be happening in September called 2018 SV13. And here is an article on that asteroid. It says 131-foot wide asteroid may strike Earth airburst in September, Space Agency says. European Space Agency threat risk lifted uh, listed near Earth uh, Earthbound object reveals real reason for worldwide lockdowns and the uh, prepositioning of military assets. Of course, we know that uh, the military has been working on a lot of intercept type of technologies, uh, some deflection type of technologies. Maybe this is, has something to do with this whole lockdown thing. Maybe they're trying to prepare us for something in the future. Maybe they're trying to keep people placated. Maybe they're trying to test out some sort of compliance uh, experiments with the public as well. Because we know that if they came out and said that an asteroid was going to strike Earth, people would... You know they would and they would lose their minds. They would uh, they would be rioting. They would be uh, pillaging and and all this other type of stuff. They would be going all over the place trying to do whatever they have to to protect themselves. And of course, something like that happens. You know the whole collectivist type of thing would uh, absolutely disintegrate, and we would turn into individuals at that time trying to save our own selves. But that just goes back to what I was saying before with this whole communism and Marxism type of philosophy. If it's if it's if it really is truly all about, you know, saving humanity or saving the collective whole, then we really have to think about where this all starts from. And it all really all starts with the individual. It doesn't start with the collective. I mean, even if we were talking about a collective type thing, it always has to start with the individual. The individual has to abdicate that personal responsibility they have to see the personal responsibility as something that is less desirable and we are seeing that over and over again this abdication of personal responsibility um, even i mean who can't really get behind universal health care it sounds great 
But when you start thinking about the quality of health care and where it will go, which would be very, very low, then you can see that it, overall it will be a complete disaster, at least in the at least when it if it, if, if it's something like that was to be tried in the United States. I'm not saying it's completely impossible. But that is just something that is the foot in the door for this socialism, Marxism, state-run government. We have to really pay attention to personal responsibility because that is really what it's all about. Uh, moving on to another story here. Texas, uh, this is actually about COVID-19 as well. Uh, Texas removes 3,500 probable COVID cases from coronavirus registry. Well, big surprise there because so many of these cases are being listed as COVID when they are clearly not. Uh, this is a, uh, a clip of, an uh, I wouldn't call it an expose, but uh, a report that was done on some of the surprising things that uh, one news station did find out about some of these numbers that are being reported for uh, COVID-19. Well, Charles, they really haven't given us much of an explanation at this point. The way we found out is I was asking the county health officer about two coronavirus deaths involving people in their 20s and whether they had any underlying conditions. Then one of his answers surprised us. The first one didn't have any. Uh, he died on a, in a um, motorcycle accident. New questions tonight about the accuracy of the state's coronavirus death numbers. Orange County Health Stand Officer up. Dr. Raul uh, Pino telling us one person dead. reported to have died from COVID was killed in a motorcycle accident. So was it removed from the data? I don't think so. I have to double check. We were arguing. We were discussing. We were discussing and trying to argue with the state. Not because of the numbers. I mean, it's a hundred. It's not make any difference if it's 99. Yeah. But the validity that the fact that the individual didn't have, didn't die from COVID-19, dying in a crash action. But you can actually argue that it could have been the COVID-19 that caused him to crash. So I, I okay, so this is happening all over the place uh, where these doctors are labeling, and this is old news, really, where they are labeling people who are dying from, you know, alternative reasons, even car crashes and motorcycle accidents and so forth as COVID, when they didn't even have COVID. It's also been reported and verified that a lot of these COVID um, tests that are being put out, they even if they don't even use them, they are coming back as COVID positive, which actually leads to another set of questions is, are these tests actually already infected or smeared with this virus to begin with. I know in the area that I live, there are people going around uh, doing contact tracing and forcing tests onto people. I know that I will not have anything to do with that because we simply cannot trust these officials that are not, if, if, the fact of the matter is if we, can't, uh, if we can't trust the actual numbers that are going out, if we can't even trust the people to put out the correct numbers, how can we possibly trust them to conduct these types of tests on us, even if it's forcible or not. Um, so that is, that's where we're at. And we're also seeing, because of these inflated numbers, we're seeing more people demand other people to wear these masks. We're seeing it being mandated in places like Costco and Walmart and other places. And, you know, there's a lot of people saying that, you know, well, it's, it's, you know, a business can do whatever they want to. And I think this is an easy out. I think it's an easy excuse. And it's, uh, it's really a straw man type of argument because it is neglecting the real cause of people not wanting to have to have anything to do with this because we have been sold a, um, a river of lies from the beginning. We all know that it originated in China. We know that China covered it up. We know that they've been working on these coronaviruses for a long time. It's, this wasn't something that just came out of some sort of animal like a bat or something like that. That was just a story that came out. Doctors have been coming forward over and over, and they're talking about the masks and how it is not going to be as effective as they thought it was going to be. They've also come out and said that uh, asympt asymptomatic uh, cases or, or spread is really not happening either, but let's not worry about that either. We just have to worry about being compliant to what they are telling us. We have to remain afraid. 
And the, 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 the more afraid that we are, the more compliant we're, we'll be and the more they'll be able to, to forward their agenda. This is problem, reaction, solution. This is a dialectic that we've been sold so many times throughout history and we have continued to fall for it. Uh, moving on to uh, Chicago Tribune. This is actually not an opinion piece um, column. Uh, this is a uh, Trump is right. Joe Biden will uh, abolish the suburbs and no one will be safe. Now, this is from the Chicago Tribune. So I was kind of surprised to see such a um, headline like this. But once you go into reading this, it is just a smear on Donald Trump and it is a sarcastic type of um type of piece where and it's a, it's it's really at the end of the day it's it's just it's a psyop piece it's what what happens is is that you make fun of certain things and you make it sound extremely absurd it's called telling the truth in plain light it's 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 an article that's basically telling the truth and reducing it to absurdity and when people are reading this, they'll they'll inevitably be like, yeah, that's pretty funny. So whenever they think about these types of things, it will be funny. President Donald Trump is right. Joe Biden, a known supporter of evil and Marxism in America, hating wants to abolish the suburbs. But it's worse than that. The Democratic presidential candidate and former vice president doesn't seek to uh, to abolish. He wants to bulldoze, be foul and hold pagan rituals on the ashes of the suburbs. What is happening in the suburbs is, is people are actually leaving the cities and moving to the suburbs. But it's not only that. People are actually just moving out of the suburbs altogether. They're moving out of these Democratic-controlled areas because they are afraid. They're not afraid of the coronavirus. They're afraid of the violence that is that is uh, being perpetrated in a lot of these Democratic-controlled areas. The, the mayors and the governors who simply do not care about what happens in their cities. They have an agenda. They are forwarding their agenda, and they could care less. The mayor of Chicago recently put out something that says, hey, Karen, watch your mouth, in response to what uh, the press secretary, Kaylee McKinney, was calling Lori Lightfoot the derelict mayor of Chicago and said that she should request federal help to secure the city. I believe that we are getting to the point. This has already happened in Portland where the uh, where federal agents had to get involved because there was an attack. There was uh, there was an attack on federal buildings in Portland. So the uh, the police, not the police, because the police aren't doing anything, obviously, in Chicago, but the uh, the federal government had to get involved because of homeland security, and they actually put a couple people into vans and drove off. Now, some people are, are saying that this is unconstitutional and all this other type of stuff, but please understand, these are federal agents. When you attack a federal building with violence and it's politically motivated, which it is, they will put you in a van and take you off to question you because you will be seen as a terrorist. They want to know what your political, mo- what your motivations are, which they are political, as is everyone that that li- or that li- that that runs these types of towns like Gavin or Newsom and uh, De Blasio and Lori Lightfoot in Chicago. They are all working together to undermine law and order. It is all part of the the scheme and the uh, the forwarding of this ideology. Where I go back, where I'm going back to where I started where it's the abdication of personal responsibility. They want everyone to be taken care of by the government. They, you know, the, 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 the ultimate defense against Marxism is personal responsibility. And those people that have the personal responsibility, that are speaking up and are doing things on their own and speaking out against this, they are labeled as Nazis. They are labeled as traitors. They are labeled anything under the book. They, 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 you know, they, they, they go through cancellation and, and all of the above. But uh, this is this is where we are as a country right now. Of course, uh, this is a very interesting story from the Daily Dot dot com. Uh, this came out yesterday. Public sex is at the center of queer culture war. This is a real story. Unfortunately, it says public sex uh, is a thrill because it can happen anywhere. House parties, gay bars, parked cars, single use restrooms. Leather parties, the Wendy's near City Hall. Of course, Wendy's are burning down anyway, so I don't know if there's going to be any any Wendy's left. Every time there is a protest, someone's burning down a fast food restaurant. Uh, The hotel bathroom at the gaming convention, yada, yada. Each of these locations loaded with memories. Maybe the encounters uh, there were spontaneous and completely unexpected, like running into a friend at a queer bookstore and effing after drinks. Of course, this is all about abdicating personal responsibility. It's personal responsibility 
not for not to subject other people to to that period you do that behind closed doors in the privacy of your own home that is where things go but this is all about abdicating their personal responsibility and putting it into the forefront and shoving it down everyone's throat they want this ideology of irresponsibility thrown down and shoved down everyone's throat so you'll accept it and you'll just have to deal with the new culture that we're living in right now um, it goes further to say, so then again, simply being in a public restaurant, public can be a disaster when you're queer. Having sex in a public place almost comes in naturally when your body is hardly welcome to begin with. <sighs> you know, I could go on reading this, but I mean, you get you get the the idea, you get the picture of the programming that is going on in this country right now. And in fact, the world, it's it's exploding in the United States. And I don't see it stopping anytime soon. In fact, when Trump does win in a landslide, when he does beat Joe Biden worse than he beat Hillary Clinton, please look for everything to literally explode. They will do anything possible to get rid of Trump. And you know exactly where I'm going. You know exactly what I'm insinuating. And if that does happen, if they decide to push the final nail, as it were, then you will see you will see civil war. You will see. You will see riots and violence that, that uh, have not e- that have not ever been seen in this country. But that is the uh, type of world that we're living in. And we see this, this type of animalistic behavior because the Democrats are, and, the, and those that run these cities are giving the green lights to these people to just do whatever they want, abdicate personal responsibility. You don't act to have to even have to act like a human being anymore. This is another thing that happened in an airport. Now, now, of course, we don't have, we don't have everything that happened, but it's this type of visceral, animalistic response, lacking of all human reasoning and decency that we are seeing just explode everywhere. I'll play this for you too. And on and on it goes. We saw uh, a very similar riot outbreak at another airport. Uh, actually, probably, I think it was yesterday or the day before, where some women who could not get to Philadelphia, they were delayed by maybe, I'm assuming, probably a few hours at most. And we, you know, this is understandable uh, during this uh, pandemic. You're going to experience a lot of delays and everything. But this was unacceptable to these people. They responded in kind with violence and a disrespect of human life, disrespect of safety, disrespect of morality, or any kind of just decency at all of being a human being. It's an abdication of personal responsibility. I think that's just really what the... um, the, the, the term of and, and, and the, the idea of what I'm trying to get across, this, this type of communist philosophy that is being perpetrated and being shoved down the throats of everyone today. Uh, this is another video here, and I'll end it with this. And this is, uh, this is true. Um, this is a UK thought police pay man home a visit over offensive Facebook comments. Uh, so I'll go ahead and... Uh, I'll play this one for you. I'll play this one for you too. Long record. That's right. You, rather than me having to look to arrest anyone. Yeah. Okay. I need to do some inquiries. Sure. Part of those inquiries is in relation to having to interview you about an allegation. Okay. About an incident over Facebook. Okay. 
okay? Um, so I can get the matter dealt with. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you to come down to the police station voluntarily, mm -hmm. okay? So we can do what is still a PACE compliant interview, mm -hmm. um, and you'd be entitled to free independent legal advice. Mm -hmm. No, I don't need it, but yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, I was looking to do it on Sunday at 12 o'clock. Is that any good to you? Sunday. Should be. Yeah. Can I give you that? That's got my number on it. Yes. And then if there is any problems, I'm on duty today until... Can I, can you not give me any details of it now? And why can we not just speak now? Why do I need to come down now? Because I, 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 I... It's alright, it's fine. No, I don't want you to leave the dog. Um, not there, no. I need to do it by way of interview, and the best way for me to do it, and the best way for you to be really doing it, is... is a proper interview. Well, I've, I've, I've got everything recorded here, I know, so. but I can't, I'm not going to do it that way. Well, well, do I have to come? Well, at the moment, I'm leaving it open for a voluntary interview. Well, I Okay, so I'm okay, going so to uh, I'm pause that there. You're, I'm going to put the there. link You're of that, that in the description. I'm running a little bit long on this video, but in a summary, what this is basically saying saying is that this guy was on this guy Facebook was on and Facebook he, and I guess, wrote some distressing wrote comments. Some distressing the law states comments. that it's illegal to send messages to send for the purpose of causing purpose distress of causing or anxiety, distress or anxiety, although, anxiety although this has been brought in to such a degree that anyone can claim distress or anxiety simply because they were offended. So that's the world we're living in right now. I'm sure that he just said something that someone thought that was racist or that was offensive or distressing in some way or another. Uh, to someone else, and they uh, decided that they, they were going to call the cops on him. And uh, this is and, the uh, the uh, lack of freedom the, uh, of speech. Freedom now, this was in the UK. They, the don't, UK. they don't have uh, the as as many of the protections that we have in the US. But this is coming, and we're already seeing it right now, where people are getting you know banned and so forth, and cancelled and harassed and beat up and even killed for saying the wrong things, such as all lives matter and all lives do matter. And if anyone has a problem with that, I can give you my personal address, and you can you can you can tell me what you feel about it, and we'll just go. About it, we'll way. Go about it that uh, way. We we do uh, live we, in we a free in a free society, at least society, at least for the moment. For Excuse me, I was having some issues with my audio. I'm sorry if there was some echo there. Um, but we do live in a free society, at least for the moment. And uh, until we understand that it is personal responsibility that wins the day over communism, this this is going to continue to happen. Until the next time, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.